In this video, I will show you how to apply a pressure load onto one face of the model. Pressure is applied using the load pressure command. You must give a function or a curve command to define pressure versus time and the geometry, coordinate system, part or set of parts or a set of faces to specify the region where the load will apply. Here I have already created the geometry using the geometry seed node command that defines the top face of the beam. This is the same command that was used to clamp the end of the beam in the last video, so refer to that video for an explanation of this command. I have also introduced the parameter command at the very top of my input file. This command is very useful when working with curves and functions, especially, which we will do in this video. The parameter command lets the user specify a value that can be called upon from other commands. For example, if you use the same value throughout many commands, using a parameter will let you go back and change the value by simply changing the parameter rather than all the inputs. One value that many commands often depend on and that you will probably often need to change is the physical end time of the simulation. Here I have named this parameter t end and specify the physical end time to 0 0.05 seconds. Now we specify a pressure load by using the command load pressure. You will now see that the manual window has brought up the entry for this command. All your available inputs are shown here, as well as a short description. The load pressure command has three key inputs. First, we need to specify an entity type, which tells the solver how one intends to specify the region where the command will apply. We have specified a geometry, so we type G for entity type. What follows is the geometry ID, 2, and then the curve or a function ID that gives the pressure versus time of the load. Let's just set that to 1. The rest of the possible inputs are optional, and regard scale factors, start and end time of the load, as well as a load restriction based on visibility of surfaces from a point. For now, let's proceed without them. We now only lack the pressure time specification. This can be given using either a curve or a function command. The curve command lets the user specify a piecewise linear curve. The function command lets the user define analytical functions that can be used in the same way as curves. Because these commands can be used interchangeably, a curve and a function command may not have the same ID. For simplicity, Let's define the triangular pressure time curve, starting from zero at physical start time, then linearly increasing to a pressure peak half ways, before returning to zero at physical end time. Type asterisk curve. Then give the right curve ID, one, from the load pressure command, skip past the optional scalar factors and data type inputs, and type the first data set, 0 for physical start time and 0 for pressure at physical start time. For the next data set, our earlier defined parameter now comes in handy. Because we are likely to man want to manipulate our physical end time later on, it is convenient to work with parameters in the curve command rather than set numerical values. Here we wish to specify a halfway physical time but with the physical time that we might change later on. But because we have specified the parameter t end already, we can just call on this by typing a percentage sign. If correct, all the appearances of this parameter should now be highlighted by yellow. For the half time, divide this by 2. In the function and curve commands, parameters can be called on by just typing the percentage sign but in other commands, you will need to bracket your parameters in square brackets. It therefore may be good habit just to bracket everywhere, no harm done. 
Next, specify a pressure peak, for example, 2 MPa. And then the final data set, end time and pressure at end time. We have now properly defined the load. With that, our model has material specifications, boundary condition and a load. We now only need to give a physical time specification for this model to be complete for solver analysis. I will show how that is done in the next video using the time command.